the CTO for RSA Security, for his presentation, Solving the Cloud Security Equation, Visibility plus Control equals Trust. So, Brett? Excellent. Good morning, everybody. And uh, on behalf of RSA, uh, welcome to the RSA conference. And also, happy Valentine's Day. Uh, yeah, I know, I know. Only security geeks would uh, set up uh, a conference on Valentine's Day. I apologize for those uh, complaints of spouses and uh, significant others in the audience. So sorry about that. But that's the way it goes. OK, let's see if I can operate this. Today, I'm going to talk about uh, trust in the cloud, sort of on the Valentine's theme, maybe. Uh, but. Uh, uh, talk about some of the challenges around trust and uh, why we certainly think that's uh, such a huge uh, problem in the, in the uh, you know, area of, uh, of the cloud today. I think a lot of us have seen uh, these sorts of surveys that are shown up here. There's a, here's a survey from Harris that shows that such a huge number of CIOs are concerned about security issues around cloud adoption and some Forrester uh, data as well. I mean, we've seen a bunch of these things. I think we all in this room especially know uh, what a huge challenge it is uh, around security in the cloud, and we've, there, there need, really needs to be ways to uh, overcome some of the issues with respect to trust. And um, what are those kinds of concerns uh, in terms of both from the standpoint of cloud customers, uh, you know, those enterprises, the different consumers that use those cl cloud services, as well as the service providers themselves? Uh, we really view that trust falls into three main categories around uh, identity, information, and, and infrastructure. They're all variations of the theme with respect to trust. So we think about uh, concerns, security concerns, as we, as we talk about identity. We think about issues in terms of how do we maintain effective security access to those cloud services. We think about the challenges with respect to attack services, attack surfaces. We think about how difficult it is to provision those identities uh, across multiple cloud services. And then finally, requirements for users to access data and to demonstrate compliance. So we have all those challenges with respect to identity. Uh, the second component in, in terms of security concerns are around the infrastructure. We know this in infrastructure is changing. We have uh, components that sit on premise in the data center. We have multiple cloud providers. Uh, we've heard of some today, and we know there's lots and lots more. So we have the issues in terms of um, the concerns about the stack, potential stack compromises of that uh, IT environment, the fact that uh, malware continues to expand. A whole other thread that I won't talk about here is challenges around things like advanced persistent threats and what does that mean in the, in the cloud services space. Requirements around geolocation, we heard a little bit about that earlier today as well. Uh, the fact that we want certain workloads to run in one place in the planet and not another. And then, uh, again, requirements around visibility uh, in those security controls for the infrastructure stack, uh, particularly as we think about virtualization. The, the last area in terms of security concerns is with, with respect to information. How do we maintain confident, confidentiality and integrity of the information? How do we appropriately share it via the cloud? And again, how do we demonstrate compliance? So a lot of concerns out there. And one way or the other, you know, all of us have to deal with how we solve these requirements for the cloud. Uh, so certainly I appreciate all the work that um, the Cloud Security Alliance has done in this space. Uh, we've been extensively involved with, with CSA since, since, since its inception. Uh, we continue to support it, and uh, we certainly think it's a, an important vehicle to help push forward several of these issues. In particular, one of the things that we've been working on is focused on this uh, Consensus Assessments Initiative questionnaire. Uh, we took the, the questionnaire that uh, many of you may be familiar with, and we've, uh, in fact, uh, put it uh, within Archer, which is our governance risk and compliance tool. So this is a, a very effective tool to be able to start to measure a lot of those concerns that I described in the previous slide and be able to start thinking about both uh, from an enterprise standpoint as well as a service provider standpoint just how effectively these new deployments are addressing some of those concerns. Uh, this is an example snapshot, probably pretty tough for you to see in this audience. but. Um, it gives you a little bit of an idea in terms of what Archer can do in terms of helping us to uh, begin to measure the notion of compliance and, and the effectiveness of those controls in the cloud. 
So what this uh, dashboard shows in Archer on the left-hand side is a number of categories. Those are all the different categories of questions in the CSA questionnaire. And then it can measure as people respond, uh, the correct responses that show that you're effectively compliant with respect to those controls, the incorrect ones. And you can measure the, that business process in terms of uh, how organizations move to uh, more effectively address those requirements. So it's a beginning, certainly very, very early stage, but it's a beginning to start to think about how organizations, you know, how, how, how much progress they've made in terms of uh, these, uh, these kinds of criteria and, and their way forward. So now what are the steps beyond that in terms of as we start to assess this environment? Well, the first requirement is we think about visibility and control, really, and that's really the, the core requirements of trust. The first requirement is to be able to span both the physical data center and uh, you know, whether that's uh, both the, you know, the, the uh, on-premise deployments that exist in the, in the you know, legacy systems as well as those moving to the virtualized world, uh, also, of course, known as the private cloud, and then the, the share of those services as they get de deployed to the public cloud. So one of the, the primary requirements as we think about dealing with all this tr trust considerations I talked about is that it has to span this entire model. We have to have a way to measure and, and provide trust, whether that's in physical infrastructure, virtualized infrastructure on-prem, or in the cloud. And you know, I think certainly the world is gonna be hybrid pretty much forever. And uh, so what does that mean? That means that organizations, little by little, are taking different components of their IT stack and moving them on-prem in the cloud, and that's gonna be an ongoing process. So we need to have notions of trust that span this environment and allow organizations to move trust over time. And so what does that mean? I mean what that means is as we think about this hybrid model, there are some huge technology challenges in terms of scale and, com and complexity. Chris Hoff actually mentioned several of these. It's really, and we've heard this theme over and over again. You know, as we think about these large systems, lots of different cloud service providers, you got some challenges around scale and complexity, and it's that scale and complexity, if anything, that's gonna kill this whole approach. We have to be able to address these issues. So, um, what are some of those issues around scale? So from a customer perspective, there are concerns around visibility and control that just mean that it's tough to, to adopt these environments, right? That uh, just the, the cost of complexity in terms of these deployments, the fact that there's no single view uh, makes it uh, of great concern to the, those enterprise customers for deployment. From the cloud service provider side, uh, this becomes an impediment to them being able to offer services to the enterprise customers. And the high cost and compl complexity of those services uh, makes it a, a huge challenge in terms of their, their customer adoption. And oftentimes, these service providers aren't necessarily hardcore security companies. You know, overall, if we think about it from a, from a high-level standpoint, we've seen this play out many, many times over the years in terms of distributed systems. And that is we see this inclination to go to point-to-point -point integration between a single client and a single server, right? Whether it's things like authentication and you have point-to-point -point authentication, authorization models, and so forth, um, that kind of point-to-point -point integration never scales in distributed systems. You need some kind of middleman, something that sits in the middle to serve as a, as a broker, to serve as a, as, a, as a notion of trust authority to be able to map from all the different clients on one side to all the different service providers on the other. And that's really where certainly we're focusing is this concept of what we call a cloud trust authority. And that's in fact, we just have an announcement today at the conference this morning exactly on this topic. It's um, certainly a long-term vision. The notion of a cloud trust authority we think is an absolute requirement to make all this work. Uh, this is something that RSA is starting down the path. We have some initial offerings that we've announced and it's gonna be a journey that's gonna go on I'm sure for many years. But certainly it's very, a very key and core part of RSA's strategic vision going forward. So the idea is in, in fact really to have a set of cloud-based services for securing and uh, demonstrating compliance for the cloud. And very much again, as Chris mentioned, this notion of having you know, open, flexible APIs, standard space to make this work in a, in a, you know, a services-based model. So just a quick summary in terms of uh, you know, what we're doing in this space, just to, just to uh, and then I'll, I'll conclude. So we, um, we start with the focus around uh, uh, cloud trust authorities, particularly in the identity space. We've seen organizations over and over again uh, require that that's the first thing they need is to be able to uh, authenticate once 
it's yet again another variation of uh, requirements around single sign-on, and be able to use credentials and map those credentials across multiple service providers. So being able to manage access to the cloud, a consistent authentication process along with single sign-on, uh, standards-based approaches like, of course, good old SAML, the security assertion markup language, which has been around for some time, an excellent standard to base that notion of federation. Uh, stronger notions of provisioning, entitlements. Those are the kinds of mechanisms that we think are required in the identity space. We move on to the infrastructure space. So what has to be required, especially with respect to workloads in the cloud? And especially as we think about those workloads not necessarily being static on a, on a you know, running on a physical server, but ha having those workloads move around from machine to machine. So we have requirements for, require, for uh, hardening and integrity of those environments. Again, you have new challenges because uh, you have to harden them and still permit their mobility. Um, you have requirements for those workloads to run in a particular place on the planet, as I mentioned before. So geolocation of workloads. How do you deal with uh, defending threats against those workloads? Uh, again, they're potentially open and vulnerable to more attacks. So being able to have a strong notion of trust with respect to those information workloads, again, becomes key. And then third, uh, trust-based services around information. So how do we manage sensitive content? How do we deal with classification of content? Recognizing what's sensitive and what isn't so we can impose the right kinds of policies. Uh, and apply appropriate encryption and digital signature approaches. So that gets into the whole topic of, of key management and being able to deal with uh, effective key management life cycles, tokenization, geolocation, and the like. So, um, so why is this useful? And it goes directly to the concerns I talked about before. Uh, from a customer perspective, we think the primary thing is, is all around eliminating complexity. If a, a cloud trust authority existed or a set of these cloud trust authorities, it simplifies life for those end customers. They eliminate point-to-point -point integrations with all the different you know, individual service providers out there, and that cloud trust authority can serve as an authority to map across multiple uh, clients on one side and, and servers on the other. Um, it also, the approach gives a, an umbrella view of exactly what trust means for an organization. So I talked before about enterprises requiring uh, this visibility and control on, uh, with respect to private cloud offerings as well as public. They need something that can span, uh, have a view across both, pull the feeds from all those different environments together to be able to judge appropriate compliance. So we think such an offering gives ex exactly that approach. And, and then finally, to be able to consistently manage that security across the environment. So from a cloud provider standpoint, we think this helps the providers because it enables them to um, deal with those customer requirements, and that speeds adoption of the, service, of the service provider offerings themselves. Back when I started, I said that a lot of CIOs have great concerns in terms of adoption of, of cloud services because of security. If those service providers do an effective job convincing enterprises that they're protecting information, that they're dealing with those compl uh, compliance requirements, that's, of course, a good thing for service providers. It also eliminates, the, the approach eliminates, again, point-to-point -point integrations so service providers can have more of a one-stop shopping in terms of dealing with trust as opposed to having to go to every single tenant. And tenants may have different requirements for credentials and authentication and the like. And so, again, a, a, a common cl cloud trust authority uh, makes this far simpler and reducing the overall burden with respect to security. So uh, this is a huge vision, and uh, it's not going to be solved by any one company, certainly, certainly not by RSA alone. Uh, we're working with a number of partners in this space. We're initially spending a lot of time with VMware, and uh, the notion around cloud trust authority, particularly as it relates first focus on identity, as well as this broader umbrella view of compliance, pulling all these feeds together. This is something we're spending, uh, in fact, a lot of time with VMware on. Uh, but it's, this whole approach is really about building an ecosystem. And so we'll be working with a number of partners in this space, a number of service provider partners, a number of other security vendors, infrastructure vendors, large enterprises to be able to pull this together as an overall vision. So I think that's it for, for today. Hopefully um, that makes sense in terms of uh, just a, a view with respect to uh, what cl cloud, what trust means in the cloud and why this concept of uh, we think a cloud trust authority is so important. Thanks very much.